convicted paedophile Dennis Ferguson has been reunited with a former associate with the help of Centrelink. Alexandria Brooks was jailed alongside Ferguson in 1987 for the abduction and sexual assault of three children from New South Wales. Brooks has since re-offended and is out on bail. He was given Mr Ferguson's phone numbers and address after Ferguson requested contact through Centrelink, whose general manager, Hank Yongan, joins us on the line. Mr Yongan, thanks for your time this morning. It's a pleasure. A lot of people are quite uh, surprised and annoyed that this has happened. In fact, some probably outraged. How could it happen? Look, I'm as shocked by this as anybody. Um, clearly, our processes were inadequate in this case. Can I just make it clear that I regard this as a complete misuse of what is a really valuable service that's helped thousands of families in the past? OK, so can we try and get an understanding um, of just how this process works? So Centrelink is able to put people in touch with other people that they might have lost contact with, is that right? Uh, yes, it is. But uh, firstly, the onus is completely on the missing person to decide whether they want to make uh, contact with the family. Basically, there's a process where uh, someone who wants to make contact approaches us. They provide us with details. We review that case. If the person is on a Centrelink payment, and we neither confirm or deny that, we then pass the details on to the missing person, and the onus is on them to get back to the original requester. But clearly, in this case, the right connections were not made. Uh, and um, from our point of view, this is a misuse of the system. We're determined to ensure it never happens again. In fact, we've suspended the program pending a full inquiry and review of our procedures. I guess what people would like to know is that when the person was sitting opposite Dennis Ferguson and this request was made by uh, Ferguson to get in contact with Brooks, isn't there something on the computer system that tells the person on the other side of the desk about who they are dealing with? Well, look, the first thing I have to say, of course, is that um, uh, this occurred some time ago when Fergus's name was uh, not up there, you know, with the profile that he currently has. But doesn't having, something having flash on the computer to tell this person? were inadequate. Doesn't something flash on the computer, say, a flag a warning, anything on the computer to reveal the nature of the person that they are dealing with, that they are convicted pedophile? Well, it does appear that in this case we overlooked that or we didn't pick it up. That's why I'm very concerned to ensure that we put in place proper processes to ensure that this never happens again. This should not have happened. We acknowledge that the checks and balances that we had in place are not adequate. We do regard this as a misuse of this program. And having said that, we're determined to reintroduce it because it is a valuable program, but clearly all those checks and balances need to be in place. OK. All right. Hang Jong, and we've run out of time. Many thanks. Thank you.